Next section deals with non-ideal op-amp parameters. I'm going to talk about some of the properties of a 741 op-amp in this section of notes. Obviously, we're not using this op-amp in the digital color organ, but what I could do is look up the data sheet of the LM324 and see what values some of these same parameters have, and are they important in your design of the digital color organ? First one that's important for op-amps is a thing called open loop gain versus frequency. And here's a graph of what the 741 op-amps gain looks like versus frequency. You see it's very large at low frequencies, but eventually at about a megahertz, the gain is about one. So it's at that point no longer really an amplifier. One of the terms we use with op-amps is a thing called gain bandwidth product. Let me show you how it's actually measured on the curve. You pick any gain and extend the line across until you run into the open loop curve and then record that frequency. The product of that gain and frequency is actually the gain bandwidth product of the op-amp. In this case, a gain of 100. This would be 40 dB if it was in units of dB. And then a frequency here of 10 kilohertz gives me uh, 1 megahertz. Units on gain bandwidth product are just that dimensionless times frequency. Do it for a gain of 10, and now we go a little higher up in frequency and we get 10 times 100 kilohertz, and that too is 1 megahertz. So any line you draw across here and run into the open loop curve, you'll get that same result until you get where the slope begins to change here. So as long as the slope is minus 20 dB per decade, you actually get this result anywhere along the curve. And this is the product of what's called the gain and bandwidth of the op-amp open loop. In the 201 textbook, they showed that the open loop gain bandwidth product of an op-amp is roughly the same as the closed loop gain bandwidth product of the amplifier that you make. So if we're making a inverting amplifier and the low frequency gain is 10 in magnitude, and there's a gain of minus 10, uh, we'd see that the, the 3dB bandwidth is about 100 kilohertz. So again, the product of these two would then be 1 million if that was a 741 op-amp. Another parameter that uh, can be troublesome in time domain circuits is a thing called slew rate. And what this is, is that when you have a pulsed input, the op-amp can't respond fast enough to the change in voltage. This has to do with some of the internal biasing and some of the compensation capacitances that are used to create that previous picture. This is typically what you'd see out of a 741 op-amp built as a, as a buffer. With the initial jump in voltage, you'll actually see a little bit of that jump occur, and then the output will just slowly reach the final value. We'd expect the output to be for a minus 5 volt input, minus 5 volts out, and for a plus 5 volt input, 5 volts out. And it actually does that if you wait long enough. But in between, uh, we run into this thing called slew rate. Same thing on the back side, but you don't see this little bit of a jump. This comes actually from a substrate capacitance. And it's typical in many op amps, doesn't occur in all. The slew rate is calculated by taking the change in voltage over the change in time. So in this case here, I hit a change of 10 volts occurring in about 20 microseconds. Here it's a little bit different, but close to the same value. So whenever the output's trying to change faster than this, the op amp just slows down and that's the rate at which it's gonna change at. So this can cause problems in some audio circuits when you're listening to audio results, but also we'll be doing conversion of our signal into pulses and uh, this will be distorting some of the signals. So is this important in a digital color organ? Well, let's take a look at it and maybe make some decisions. Lastly, we're going to create a bank of lights with uh, made out of LEDs. So we're going to take eight LEDs, put four in parallel, another four in parallel, and then those in series. What I want to do with this transistor is to saturate it so that we pull as much current as possible through it. So when you saturate this, the voltage here is very small, and we've got the 9-volt power supply here across this uh, series combination of a resistor and a two uh, sets of LEDs. In the 303 lab, we looked at saturating a transistor in lab number eight. We've got to make sure the base current is large enough so that the ratio of the collector to the base current is less than the DC beta of the transistor. And then the base current coming in here is going to be this node voltage, Vn, minus the turn-on voltage here, around 0 0.6, 0 0.7, divided by the resistor R16. The collector current is going to be the current in this resistance, which is going to be this node voltage of 9, minus this node voltage, which is the drop across this LED, and then likewise again, plus the saturation voltage here. And that's going to determine how much current we have in the LEDs. And we have to worry about the overall current that we're going to draw into this, because we're going to have a lot of lights to light up, and we have to worry about our power supply being big enough to supply all this. Now, when you want to shut off the transistor, all you got to do is make this input smaller than the turn-on voltage here, again, on 0.6 or 0.7 volts. 
The input to this transistor, the bank of LEDs, uh, comes from our microcontroller. We're actually going to have a hex inverter between the two. And we'll have pulses, and we'll be looking at measuring some of these. I just want to tell you some of the terminology and, and some of the things we're going to be worried about as we're building our digital color organ. In general, we can talk about a pulse having a period, and then uh, it's going to be high and low for a certain percentage of the cycle. Okay, so the percentage of the cycle that it's high here we'll call T high, and then the overall period that's here. Now the current that we draw from the collector is going to look basically the same as this because we're going to be sh shutting the transistor on and off and we'll get a pulse of current. The average power that we're giving up from the power supply is going to be the product of the voltage and current of that power supply's um, signals. And we roughly have a, a positive um, 9 volts for our input. And then we have a varying collector current. So if we integrate that over a period, divide by the period, much you get the average power consumed by uh, that circuit. Signal here is zero for a part of the period, so the integral from zero to t of h has a value, but then from t of h to t, there's nothing here. So the integral is going to be this particular part of this integration. Then I can come out in front, and then we'll have a current here that's either zero or a value, and that'll be our maximum collector current. But what's left over then is just the integral of 1 dt. That's just going to be equal to t, evaluated by the upper limit of t of h minus the lower limit, which is zero and then divided by the period. And that's going to multiply 9 volts times the maximum collector current. This term here is called a duty cycle. As the duty cycle increases, your power consumption will increase. So we can figure out whether we have enough power available to, uh, to drive our uh, color organ, uh, or how far can we push this thing before we, we run into problems with our power supply. So these are some of the issues that you need to think about with a digital color organ if you're going to try to improve the performance. Let's go to page 26 that talks about what to do for the next lab. This was mentioned also in the previous lab lecture. Let's go to the next page here. And it's talking about writing a report. And I thought I'd just talk a little bit about that in, in this lab. You'll be turning in weekly reports, which are very short, just showing us that you have built the circuitry and, and that it works in, in, in a way that we can quickly check. And then you'll turn in a, a picture and then also a short lab report. But in a, at, the end of the, at the end of the project, we're going to ask you to submit a, a formal report. And you need to be working on this week by week. And the format of this, I would like to have a cover where you're having a title and then copying the Code of Ethics Declaration that we're using in all of our lab experiments. And then I want you to have a summary next, just stating what improvements you have, if any. And then in the report itself, some type of an introduction, a body of the report, where you're explaining the things that you have in your summary. If you weren't able to make any improvements, then I'd like to just explain how this thing works. And then could you also summarize this into a brief conclusion? And then you might have appendices of data or other things that you want to submit. Please don't wait until the end of the project to start this. It's uh, something you need to get some thought to and also to analyze how the digital color organ is working and how you might be able to improve its performance. This is lab lecture two of the digital color organ.